Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and we're going to have a look at this more budget oriented case today. So this is the Sahara P35 which comes in at only 50 pounds, which is about 60 euros, 65 dollars, whatever in your current region. I'll put a link to the Amazon page below so you can go check what the price is at the time of you watching this video. Now before diving into the review, I would like to mention that Sahara is a horrible name for a computer case because the last thing you want is for your computer components to be really hot and really dusty. Um, let's see if that is actually the case though. 
Now you can buy this case in two different variations. You can get the cheaper model, uh, which doesn't come with any fans. And that one is then 50 pounds. You can also get a 70 pounds version, which will come with four of these Pirate Turbo RGB fans. Uh, and then you also get a little controller hub, so you can control everything using this little button up here to control everything, but you can also use a remote. Now the P35 is a full ATX case, but it is quite small for an ATX case. Let's start at the front. There's room for triple 120mm fans or dual 140mm fans. You can try to put a radiator in here as well, which I tried. I tried to put a 280 in there, but the screw holes don't line up because of end tanks and stuff like that. So you don't really want to use a radiator in the front unless if like me, you just tape it in with double sided tape. In the top, you can get dual 140s and at the back, you can put a single 120 millimeter fan. Now it's been pretty obvious from me filming this way that there's tempered glass on the front panel and tempered glass on the side panel. Now, it really strikes me how the tempered glass was added to pre-existing chassis parts, so it's a really weird mount. The gloss is actually slightly larger than it has to be, and it doesn't quite fit, so there's a little bit of a gap in between. It's not perfect, but it's really budget-friendly, and to be honest, I don't mind it all that much. Now, obviously, computers need to breathe, so there are slots along the sides of the front panel. Um, on top of the front panel, there's the I.O. So you have this RGB cycling button. So if you then use it with the Sahara RGB controller, you have your RGB cycling button there. There's a single USB 3.0 port and then dual USB 2.0 ports, along with a reset button and a power switch and of course your headphone and microphone jacks. Before opening it up and showing the internals, I really want to talk about packaging. Um, this is a budget case and to be honest, I feel like it's been packaged better than 99% of the cases that I've reviewed. And I've had a look at quite a few of them. They use open cell foam throughout, and even in between the feet, they wedge little bits of foam so the feet don't get bent. The windows have protective plastics on both sides. Um, overall packaging is awesome, and I wish more companies would package their stuff as well as Sahara does. Opening up the case, you can see the layout that we've been getting with most cases lately. So it's one giant chamber, on the main side of the case, power supply cover to cover everything with a hard drive cage underneath. And then you have your massive ATX motherboard mount with some room in front for a radiator if you manage to make one fit. What I really like is that there are cutouts for your cables and most of them are actually grommeted as well, which you don't find that often anymore with a lot of cases. So even with a budget case, it's pretty impressive that they did this. There's also room for an optical drive mount, so a five and a quarter inch drive mount. So you can use that for bay rest combos uh, or an actual optical drive if you really want to. The power supply cover is very well vented, so your power supply shouldn't overheat no matter which orientation you put the fan in. There is a dust filter in the bottom if you really want to use the fan down mode like you probably should. Removing the window is not ideal, so these screws are incredibly short, but it does come with these rubber mounts. So the panel will stay in place on its own, but there's very little thread on these screws. So you might want to be careful when mounting and unmounting the side panel. Moving to the back of the motherboard tray, there's not an awful lot of room here, but there is enough room, even in my build, using an SSD and the hard drive and cable extensions and an RGB controller and four RGB fans and all that sort of stuff, two more fans on the radiator. Cable management is really easy. I didn't even use zip ties with this build because it was so easy to do. There are an awful lot of zip tie hoops. You get two drive mounts, so you can put in a hard drive, two hard drives, an SSD, or two SSDs, or any combination of that if you want to. For me, I use an M.2 SSD on the motherboard, and then an SSD for my project files, and then a storage SSD as well. Um, they mount in like usual, but it's a bit weird that the cables actually exit from the side where there is like a little bar over top, so cable management here can be a little bit more tricky. Now the big elephant in the room with Sahara, you know, is it going to be hot and dusty? Let's talk about the hot part first. I did some tests with this case, it doesn't run hot. There are a lot of cutouts here in the front and because I'm running triple 120s on the intake and another dual 140s on the radiator behind it, there's a lot of air going in and so temperatures are pretty good. They're, for example, way better than the Silverstone RL07 that I'm so happy to get rid of. If you wanna buy one, comment about the dusty bit then well 
I have no way of knowing. So I just got this case. I did a build in it real quick and this video has to be live this evening. So I don't have like weeks of putting it in a dusty room to check for that, but there are no dust filters on the intakes. There is one of those removable dust filters at the top and one for the power supply as well, but the intakes aren't filtered. So then some closing thoughts on the Sahara P35. Actually for the price, it's a really, really good case. It's not perfect, not at all perfect. There are no dust filters on the intakes. The side panel is way too big for the case. There are gaps in some places. And you know, you have these breakaway PCIe covers, all that sort of stuff. It's not a perfect case, but it's 50 pounds. And for that, you do get dual tempered glass panels, Great options for doing pretty much whatever, unless if you want to go radiators, at which point you'll just use double-sided tape. The case is really well packaged, which I like, especially as someone who often builds a computer and then sells it on. Um, you can easily use the pre-existing packaging and just put an entire system in there and ship the case away again. Airflow is adequate, which is always nice. And all the panels are thick enough so they're not too flimsy, there's not a lot of noise coming out of the case. I'm overall incredibly impressed with a case at this price point. If you want to buy one, there's an Amazon link in the description. It will also give me a small kickback, so that's awesome. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and perhaps the bell icon so you actually get a notification when I put up a new video, which is every Friday at 7 Central European time. If you have questions, that's what the comment area is there for. And if you can't wait a whole week for my content, I do a lot of shit posting on Twitter and I often upload really nice pictures on Instagram as well with computer parts or other tech in general. If you want to support the channel with better equipment, there's a Patreon page as well, so you can go check that out. But for now, massive thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.